Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth part of this Archicad modeling tutorials. So today we are finishing up the model of one single unit in these multiplied housing units. So let's get on to it. So we can now remove this reference because we are done with openings. And let's begin with the coloring. So today we are going to begin with coloring, then we put in these beams, and then we also put in the seating uh, area. We finally put the coppings to these feature walls. So let's go and color. So I need you to go to the 3D tab, and we need to make this red and this uh, gray, and then we leave these ones as white. So let's begin to select. So the way in which you select, make sure that you select the first one and you know when you select another one, the other one is gone. So you make sure that you hold shift and then select the things that you want to add to a selection. So you want to continue selecting these and go around, press or to orbit and then select some more other surfaces, press O to orbit, select some more surfaces, and then we go to the settings, and then we select a stucco red rough. And that looks good. So we have an issue here, we can solve it real quick by just making this surface. We unlink it, when we go to the settings, you can unlink and then change this middle one to stucco red rough by pressing S to get it faster and that is colored. So we can have that as white. And then we can now change this feature wall. So let's go and also color the feature wall. So you want to select, so let's do it in 3D actually. So we select, shift, select, and auto orbit, then escape to, re to leave the orbit and then select again, and then move around, select again, orbit again, and there we are. So you can uh, make this stucco beige such that it is more grayish than the rest. And that is okay. Then we have an issue here. And this is because here we have three walls intersecting. So we can just delete that. And then just by using a um, perpendicular intersector, you can intersect those two walls and now it should be fixed. Yes, it is fixed, uh, but I like to have the feature wall go all the way down so the stone will be revealed on this other side and also here. So let's have this feature wall go down. So we can even select it from here. Just select this wall and this wall. And perhaps we should even make it stop there before you get to the porch. So let's uh, cut this wall before it enters the porch. And yeah, we have made it a different. So this one can actually go back to its whitish thing, which is paint glossy white. And then you can go back, then we can deal with this now. We can deal with this and that to make them go down to the ground level, which we made previously as negative 450. And look at that. So now we can take this in. Mm. We need to have this wall back a bit so it doesn't uh, protrude. And then also we need to select this slab and put push it in, which is 
uh, honestly hard to select because we already have a slab when you press shift and hover over here you see the slab which is currently the one that is stone when you go to settings it's the one that is making this stone that you're seeing here but now we want this other slab so how do we select it so while shift is still selected uh hold tab and there you have selected it so now we can move it in there and you are essentially done mm? and we have done a quick coloring uh, looking good so right now we start on the beams so let's go and begin the beam so i need you to go to the beam tool double tap on it and here it is so um from the reference we want the beam to be okay we we want it to be deeper so we can choose 300 and then 150. Uh, what you just want is to have it slender like that so have it more deep and then just a bit wide so 150 will work and 300 deep so let us now also in here change the material to timber so say timber not structure maybe roof yes roof roof will work and then we go to the model and we can select mahogany and that's what we need so let's go and place it so click on the first point and when you hold shift so you can see this is 500 so we need to have it one meter away double click to to place it because i'm currently selected here but if you had it here you wouldn't have to double click but anyways let's position it starting from here maybe i want it 100 away from my feature wall so i can now multiply it so before i multiply it you want to go to 3d and we need to position it well so let's select it and then control d and then oh make sure that it goes along the z axis and then you hold shift to keep it in the z axis that's how you edit in 3d so then uh, for us to change that dimension we hold we press tab and then you can see that now we get that so that we can put in like what 700 and boom it is positioned very well so we want it to be inclined at about 45 degrees so you want to tap on this lower node so let's add an angle to it uh, maybe 135 should work which is negative 45 degrees of course and yes there you have it so let's multiply this so the way you multiply in archicad you want to right click so select it and you want to right click and then move and multiply or the shortcut which is there control u and then you get this dialog box so when this dialog box comes it you want we want to spread it along here so we drag and spread at uh, I find that 350 will work for us from center to center. You need to try the different distances, but for this one, 350 was working well. So it is well spaced. So before we exit, I need us to group it because the moment you leave it, it will be all over the place. So you will have to keep selecting one by one. So I like to group it, which you can do by going to edit grouping group or the shortcut is there, which is control G. So you group it and what that means is that now, since it is grouped, these can move together since they are, you know, identical elements. You can see how they move together. So when you go to 3D, how cool is that? Huh? So let's also do something down here, which is going to be a sitting area. So how are we going to put that sitting area? I like to use a slab. You can uh, choose an element of your liking, but let's use slab for now. And 
this time let's make it um flow timber flow uh-huh and we can link this how it will look like and let's use mahogany too so let's start from here make sure that you hold shift and it's 500 deep yeah, let's keep it at that so we need uh these ones if you look at the reference these are much closer than what you see on the up so these uh ones because you don't want someone to, s to sit in a hole so you want to make sure that you have two copies in between so we have 350 350 from there to there but you also need one in the middle so how do we place it concisely in the middle we can use our previous method of using a reference line so now when we select uh, the slab we can hover the mid over the middle and then we we, we drag a copy you, you remember how you drag a copy is you press ctrl d and then you can when you have already even selected press ctrl again and you get that plus which will give you uh, 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 and, and this time we want to begin from the middle so Make sure that you get the middle and then we hover here and yeah. So someone can actually sit on this surface. So these two, we can now select these two and spread them by 350. And look at that. Huh? Uh, we can stop around there. So let's select these ones and regroup them because you want them to be, you know, to move together because they will be all over the place if you do not group them. So now when you go to 3D, it is easy to select. So when you click one, it is grouped already. Or if it is not working, make sure that this is unchecked, which is a suspend group icon. Let's increase the height of these things. So obviously it is 450 to the ground and there we are. But you can see here we have a problem. It's conflicting uh, with the slab. So we can just move it down a bit. Like what? 25? Huh. Just to reveal that. Well, if you notice in the reference, we have this smoothened out. So how do we smooth that out? So the way I like to do it is you go to here and we will need an elevation so let's just pick an elevation so you want to go to document tab and then you double click on the section and when this tab is up make sure that you you can use any style that you want for now we just tweak on these two and make it section xx i actually want it capital xx so let's just create that section because we are going to use section xx yeah and then we drag it to the middle let's let's drag this here let's select it and right click and say open with current settings so when this uh, section is up, what we're interested in is this area here. We want to chamfer it. So the way I would chamfer that, since it's a slab, it's not going to allow us to do anything here. So we can use uh, solid element operations. And that is going to mean that we will need to use a morph which he can allow us to do some things with it so this is what i'm meaning so i can begin to draw out a shape of how i want it to look so for now let me use 150 as the radius so i position this and this is what i'm saying is that i need it to be chamfered like that so someone can be able to sit without cutting their leg there and then you want to also draw out the shape of something that you're going to be using so let's me draw you want it to overlap so the dimensions on the exterior don't matter so j just make a shape which should overlap so that now when you have that done 
because I'm using a polyline. So this is what I need. I need something that is going to subtract this portion. So let's use a morph. So let's put it here and say that we need to go to morph. So for the morph tool, we are going to just leave everything the way it is because currently we do not need to make it look anyhow because it's going to be hidden anyway. So let's uh, place it there. And the way you place it, you want to hold a uh, space bar. Here you can just see the spaces, but just hold the space bar and click there. Then you can move it back to position it right there. And make sure it is well placed. And once you're happy, you want to go to 3D and, you know, extrude the morph so how do we extrude the morph we can have it on here so first of all uh, we want to right click and select and activate tool so when it is activated so when we hover onto the surface make sure that you are along the surface and click you will get this extrude uh, option and look at that you now specify the length. So 2650 should be able to work across all these. And you, of course, you can rotate and monitor to see if it overlaps. Yes, it is working nicely. So right now we want to use element oppression. So select the targets, which are those selected and right click and say element connect and solid element pressions. So when this is up, the 15 targets have been automatically selected. So escape and now select this and assign it as an operator. Then you subtract and execute and it is done. So now we can hide this move. Like I told you, it would be hidden. So we go, you go to the settings and you want to go to where the layer is and put it on a hidden layer and look at that huh cool and we are done so finally let's put in the copings so the way i like to put in copings let's go to the roof tool is uh, by using the stair tool quite rare but i like it because it's associative and i wish we had more tools that were associative and by associative I mean that you know it it can be applied on different at different angles and all that so uh, I just like the stair tool so let's go in there and uh, what you will need in the segment you want to remove all this because all we need is going to be the top rail so we remove even this railing beneath and we have that top rail. So this, when you go to top rail component settings, you get a profile that you like. So from the reference, I think I used this. So you want to, first of all, link these ones. So you want them to, when you increase it to be proportionally increasing. And then you want to put a th uh, width here in the second option the width that is bigger than the walls so the wall thickness currently is 200 so make sure that you make something that overlaps so if i use 300 you will have a 50 this other side and another 50 behind so i think that's okay so you can also change how it looks like in 3d which is done by going to the 3d representation and you want to check to check override rail surface and i think i used metal gold yes i used metal gold and you can choose any that you like then you start to place so before we start to place make sure you have put it at the center like i told you the reference that we use is on the center so as usual we click center to center to center to center 
I like using center because it is, you know, more precise and easy to work with, you know. So the last one you double click and it is well placed. So now that it is done, we want to take this to make it flash so that we don't have those overlapping surfaces. So go back to the settings by control T and when this is up, you want to go to ends and this is currently 200 since we used 300 from the center it will be 150 to the end and when you say okay and look at that it's that it flashes it flashes so well so let's first look at what we have done mm, there it is although it's not well placed since the height is not good here so let's go to settings and you want to increase by going to the segment by a hundred. So it's 1.1 instead of the conventional one meter. And look at that. It's starting to, to look good. So now let's also put the same coping on this other wall. So you pick it by alt clicking that. Then we go to the settings and now the shorter wall was about 600. So you want to make this six, 700, just add like a 100. And then we can begin to draw. Shift click, shift. So we keep it in line, shift click and double click on the final one and you're done. So go to 3D and Look at that, huh? Cool. So even in 2D, we can decide to make this look represent correctly by, you can display order, bring this forward, huh? And then also these beams, send them backward, display order, send backward. Maybe do it twice, display order, send backward, and yes. It is now displaying correctly, both in 2D and in 3D. So join me in the next one where we shall be adding in some of the furniture because when you render, you, you want to see some things in there to make the space look habitable. Of course, we shall first duplicate and then do the final landscaping.